and a week full of surprises for most of us. What surprised you the most? What was the biggest surprise? That two-year move on Thursday? <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, I, it's, it's hard to count it up. Actually, if you go back to last Friday, we got the payroll report. You got a blockbuster payroll report. That was surprising in that you think about how, during Omicron, how many people could we hire? And you got this explosive number. Then the CPI report, as you said, which was a bit surprising. And we're moving away from reopening components driving inflation. It was pervasive across the board. And then the volatility that we just got today uh, in and around the Ukraine situation. So, boy, this was, you talk about tumultuous weeks. This was, uh, this will go down in the Hall of Fame as, uh, as one of them. And Asani, think, what did you make of all of it? I agree with Rick. It's hard to say that one event was, uh, was more turbulent than the other because the whole, really, uh, seven, eight last days have been equally turbulent. And as you said, to top it off, was the news about Russia uh, which uh, which impacted everything again drastically, although it was interesting because we started this morning with the uh, with um, interest rates going up in Ru in Russia for about a hundred basis points, and I think that had already got the market talking about why was that happening today. Rick, when it comes to inflation, what's causing it in your estimation? Because what's causing it will directly affect what we should do about it. You know, David, I mean, there is, I mean, clearly the demand function in the system is high, but what, what's, but more than that, you've got a supply, set of supply components that is pretty dramatic today. I mean, obviously you got the supply chain shocks. You know, you look at components like rent, where there's just not enough inventory today that's creating some of, the, some of this dynamic, you know, obviously come out of these oil input costs. And so you've got across the board set of influences that that's probably going to stick with us for a period of time. I do think you're going to come down in the second uh, second half of the year. By the way, there's something I was just looking at the University of Michigan data that came out. You know, it was the worst sentiment reading in 10 years. And when you look at things like time to buy a home or attractiveness to buy a home or a car, it's plummeting. So there's a really interesting dynamic at play. Prices are moving higher. It's dulling consumer sentiment. Which will re, which is again why I think you'll see some shifting over the next few months away from these these price increases are causing people to say step back and say gosh I'm going to wait for a bit of time. Rick, I was going to ask you um, if you listen to Cecilia Raz or others in the administration, the assumption was by the end of this year, in the inflation rates could be about half of what they we started the year with. Do you think we will end up the year at? three to four percent or do you think we'll be closer to five you know when we when we do run all our analytics and we look at all the quantitative data that gets into it we actually have it coming down to core pce depending on how you measure it, core pce core cpi we have coming down to around three there's a few few factors at play one of the big one is the base effects you know when you look at year on year that one will start to start to kick in some of the supply chain dynamics come off and then um and uh, as well as you would think that commodity prices will start to peak. So there's a series of factors that, that will bring it down. The thing that is pretty incredible, things like rent are hard to bring down because of the inventory dynamic. The other one that you know is gonna continue to be with us is wages continue to accelerate. So listen, I think they're gonna be sticky higher, but if you quantitatively, um, it does suggest we're gonna come down significantly by year end. But mortgage uh, applications are down, right? by quite a lot, both for refinance and and new homes. So that exactly might be right. Well, well, as the rates go up, that's not going to help that situation much at all, right? As, as housing prices go up because of the cost of things. Uh, so, Afsani, what about the wages, though? That's one thing that could be quite sticky, as Rick suggests. And we are seeing increased rates, although I must note, real wages are still going down, not quite as fast, but real wages actually went down last month. You're so right, David. And what is interesting is while wages did go up by quite a bit, particularly at the lower end of, uh, of income rates, in real terms, they're still down maybe about 2.5%. So there is still a long way to go for the lower end of wages to catch up, even though we have had this kind of progress. So I think the Fed policy, which was to try and look at inequality as one of the many dimensions of looking at employment and inflation as the two big, uh, obviously, elephants in the room, I think is going to continue to be out there. And as we get new Fed uh, members join in, it will be very interesting to watch the new dynamics. 
Uh, Rick, I think you said that you sort of project core PCE down around 3% by the end of the year. I think it was the number you used. What do you assume the Fed does in that world? Because that's the big parlor game right now. What should yeah. the Fed do and how fast? Yeah, so I'll say a couple of things. First, I want to go back to what Sonny said, because she's, she's, she's dead right. What's actually happening with wages, it's actually when you break it down, we break it down to, into deciles, income deciles. It's actually the lower end that's really appreciating in terms of income, which is actually great, which is actually quite healthy. You're closing the income gap. But like you said, you've got inflation that's picking up faster. Here's where the Fed has a real challenge. You don't want to shut off the economy. You don't want to move. You don't want to hike too aggressively. You don't want to drain the liquidity of the balance sheet too aggressively because you want to persist this economic recovery. You want to persist this wage dynamic, particularly in, in lower and in lower and middle income. The question is, you know, will you get enough natural reduction in in, the, in cost pressures that will again expand the wage dynamic relative to inflation? Actually, if you go back pre-COVID or since COVID. It's actually what's happening is income is actually growing faster than expense. It's been the near, as Sonny said, it's the near-term dynamic that is that is painful. I think the Fed's got to get off of emergency conditions, got to get to neutral, and then look at a lot of data over the next two to three months. What's happening with inflation? What's happening with some of the supply chain dynamics, the, the, the cost pressures, the input cost pressures? And then, again, not be too anticipatory such that you're shutting down the economy because, you know, that can, that can create more negative impact than you really want to do. Yeah, Afsani, last word to you on this particular subject. Uh, a lot of people are saying there's no reason on God's green earth why the Fed should be buying bonds right now. And everybody seems to agree with that. But does it really matter? Is that really driving inflation at this point? It's not driving inflation, but it's not at the same time doing anything. And it's not, uh, it, it's, hap it's helping certain kinds, certain parts of the markets, but also on top of what you said, David, particularly in mortgage markets, why is the Fed buying given the kind of hot market that Rick talked about and you talked about? So I think that should be one of the earliest parts of uh, going to start with the QT and with the quantitative um, tightening. The big problem we have is there is very little experience with quantitative tightening. And I think the Fed is learning sort of as it goes along. And it, that is why it might be so late on, on that part.